Hey guys, it's bright, out, it's bright outside today, so I, if you can't see me, I'm sorry. That's my uh, studio light is the wind, light from the window. It's bright here in Alberta, but it's still cold. I think it's minus seven or eight Celsius. You do the math on the Fahrenheit. Um, what is this, week three of isolation? I've been pretty much isolated since like March 15th. This is Easter Sunday. How are you? How are you doing? Hanging in there? Uh, I just today we're uh, I'm just cleaning up this transmission getting all this grease and gunk off. It's kind of nice and shiny. I don't know if that's aluminum. Maybe this part. Maybe not. But um and I was cleaning up the spinometer cable and then I put it down. Uh, so I've been cleaning up the speedometer, pulled it out our cable it's in good shape uh, there's a kink in it a little bit of a kink and I took it out just with the vise here and just cleaned it up on the ground on the wire wheel doesn't have to be too pretty here's the one this is from the California card and I know this one works because you can get those I don't know any car guy knows you're gonna have lots of problems with your speedometer cable uh, here's one from that car and it was out in the world for a long time because there wasn't a transmission in it. So it's not as, as good shape. Like it's, it's a good parts one. And one of the parts we're going to take off of it is this grommet right here because I don't have that one yet. I might have it, but you know. If we can, let's just lube it up a bit. Okay? My, this is my go-to now, this white lithium WD-40. Oh yeah. Gotta be careful because these old rubber breaks and tears pretty easily. What I might just do, let me just cut the end off that. Since this one's already broken, we're not going to use it. Alright, this was broken speedometer cable. Pulled the end off of it. Now we got this grommet. The other thing I noticed, let's just put this right on here so we know where we have it. Can we get it on there? He asks facetiously. I heat it up, but Ooh. how many of you are screaming at the TV right now? Saying you know how to do this effectively, and I don't. Well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do this. The big socket. So, right here. Maybe too big. Yeah, maybe not. The big socket. Ooh, I took it off. That <laughs> got stuck in there. <laughs> I hope you're coming here for tips and trips today. Today, Stompy's gonna show you some tips and trips on how to put your grommet back on your speedometer cable. Stay tuned right after the break. Brought to you by Burger King. No, just kidding. All right. I think caught that last lip there. Oh, I think it's going to go.
for you, but I did it. You probably got it on the screen. Look at that. So we've saved, salvaged that from the copy cable. We didn't have that on the on that other car. On the California car. The other thing when I do this cable, I like this cable right now because I can install this right away. And that'll make me happy. I love installing things back in the car. Uh, so here we've got a rubber grommet, but it's all flat. So we're gonna take that off or a seal. And we're gonna take that off of here. Yuck. And you can tell the seal wasn't working because there's a bunch of silicone around it. So we never had it apart. Whenever they had it apart, just mash some silicone in there. And I might have to do that again. I might not be better than that. But for now, for the short term, and short term, short term anyway, we'll try to do this. I was down in, I want to say, Spokane, Washington, two or three years ago for a good guy show. Just went to watch. And they had this, these uh, great um, swap meet there too. And they had this guy who had all these little divided seals and stuff. I know you probably get these cheaper somewhere else, but you know you like to support these guys because they gouge you at these shows. So we'll put a new seal on there. And then if we start dripping from there, we'll know why and we'll get a bigger seal. I don't know. Let's just check it. I guess I can check it out. Original shield's not that bad of shape, it's just flat. That seems to be sealing, but if it doesn't, we'll put the old one in here for a while, so we know what we're looking for. We never have to look for it. That's what I need to do. And yeah. Bob's your uncle on that one. So I hope this is not too bad with the light behind me. It's really bright out today, but I wanted to kind of walk through this here. So, obviously I understand most people who like this channel, who will like this channel or may like this channel or is in this, their, their wheelhouse, will probably know a lot about cars. Some of you guys know more about cars than I do, and I appreciate that. Um, but for people who don't, and um, this is your brake master cylinder, and this is not the right one for this car. This is a, what is called a split brake master cylinder. And this is probably what you have in your current vehicle. Even if you have ABS and stuff, you'd still have a master cylinder. What happens is you push on the pedal, a rod goes into here, and it just, two tubes come out here, and half of it goes to your back brakes, or a portion, not a half. A proportional amount of uh, fluid goes to your back brakes, and a proportional amount of fuel goes to your front brakes. And there's a proportion valve that determines that because most cars nowadays, at the very least, their front discs uh, back drums. Now, there's more and more vehicles that are all discs now, but your average vehicle, I think, is still front disc back drums. Back in the 60s, in 1964, they would had this car had a master cylinder that looked like this. This is a single master cylinder. When you hit the pedal and push all your fluid, 
comes out here, goes into here, goes to all four brakes in the same amount because this had four wheel drum brakes. Not the safest, but it was what they were doing then. And the problem with this is if you have a fault here, let's say this has a leak or something, and there's an issue, then you have no brakes. You've lost all your brakes. This has an issue, you still, there's a possibility you still have half your brakes. So this is why they went to this. And this, they went to this in 1967 Chrysler, obviously Chevy, uh, four different years, but I'd say by at least 70, this was probably a uh, standard procedure. And a lot of, you saw more and more cars that had front discs and rear brakes, or rear drums, even the TR6 front disc rear drums from the factory. And that's 76, and then it has a split mass cylinder, split master cylinder. Uh, so, being me, me being me, I, I like to keep things as original as what makes sense. Um, I like to do little silly things, like the thing I'm doing with the radio, uh, it's partly because I like doing that kind of stuff. I like playing electronics, I like uh, improving my skill set of coding. Um, it's brain exercise, especially these days. But, I like to figure stuff out like that. Um, obviously, I can just go buy a ball pump and throw it in there and it would look goofy as all hell, I think. Or I get one of those retro things, but something like this, for me, having three kids and my wife and I want to use this car, uh, basically as a weekend cruiser, take it to weddings, go for ice cream, stuff like that. Uh, I want to have a split master cylinder. That's why this is in here. And this bolts right up with that. Did, didn't it? That's kind of nice. This is the original brake booster, so this has power brakes. But, that's why we're going down this path. The problem with that is that if you see where this used to sit, this used to feed into the end of there. And that would be it. And there's a distribution block, which looks a lot like this sitting down there, the other way. Looks a lot like this, exactly like this, sitting down there. And that just is your distribution to your brakes. Uh, I'm, I've played with the idea, I've researched putting front discs on this car. And it's a possibility. The problem I've got, there's a few problems I've got there. One, this is, this, is a, this is a Mopar, not a Chevy. So there's not that much out there. And you're like, oh, there is one. Your one's getting, no. No, they're not. You know, look at look it up. Like 67 and on, you're golden. And even on certain models, 65 and on, you're golden. But you get around 64, especially on these big C bodies, you're, there's not a lot in the aftermarket. And I imagine you can make stuff fit. But I don't really want to spend a lot of time and money trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. I don't want to cut a lot of new ground. I'm not Jay Leno. I'm Angus Sutherland. No one's going to build the Angus Sutherland front desk kit, kit for the C -body, 64 C body Chrysler and then put it up to the public after. Um, but what I can do is I'm going to keep. So there are some just off the shelf disc kit, and you probably could get something to fit this, but that would probably be for a 15 inch wheel. These have 14 inch. Wheels on. I'm going to keep the steel wheels on. This is going to be a whip. A whip. This is going to be a classic Chrysler. And so it's going to have steel wheels and hubcaps on it. Now I understand there's wire wheels and... I like hubcaps for this era. They just look right. So given that, we're going to maintain four-wheel drums on this thing, which is not the greatest, but it's better... It's not bad either. Like we drove it home from California, we didn't hit anything. Um, but what we are, what I am going to do, you're doing nothing. You're watching. I am splitting this, and being that I'm splitting, there's a couple ways I could do it. And the way I've decided to do it is, you might have already guessed, I'm just going to put a second distribution block in. So I'm going to have that distribution block there, and one other one behind it, and one's going to handle the back, and the other one's going to handle the front, and on the back one. I'm just going to put blinds here and here, and on the front one, I'm just going to put a blind here. And you can buy those. You can buy plugs for that, or I can weld something up, but I think I could just I'm going to buy plugs for it. So that's one of the things we got to do next, is we got to figure that out. And i got to buy some tubing to do this, because these are all going to come up the side. I don't know how I'm really, like this, even now, like it's sitting a little forward, but that's pretty close to where it's going to sit. Like it's under the pedestal there. So these are both going to have to go back. And up, but I don't want it to look goofy, so I kind of want to kind of go up, over, up, in. And in my experience with bending tubing, that's a little, a little harder than it looks. So that's one of the next steps we're doing. I just wanted to bring you up to speed on that. 
So this is what I'm talking about here. This is the dis distribution block. This is going to the back. Well, I cut it at one point, but this will go to the back brakes. And this will go to the front brakes, each side here. And we're going to maybe move this over and put these both on the same perch. So that's what we're gonna do now, is we're going to try to take that apart. Just see how dirty and messy everything is and how well it comes apart. So I'll just give this a hit. A little tiny drink of WD-40, I guess. I should have WD-40 that earlier. You know, like when you pre-bake a cake. Oh, my ranches are too big. Guys, I don't know what I'm doing. shit like this and nothing wants to move no matter what you do. Talk about me. I need permanence. So each woman. I got her. Marred the shit out of that, but got her. Cause I ain't got nobody. All right, nobody cares for me. Okay. Get that one. Oh yeah, see? One for two. One for two. And you know what? If it really comes down to it, I probably can cut that off and reflare it and put a new thing on there. So don't yell at me too much. Don't get on my case too much, man. Sad loon, sad loon. Won't I'm not so bad. This one we might not even be able to be keep I don't know just because it's cut farther down. Some prick cut it farther down when he took the stub frame off. That jerk. All right. Okay. More WD-40? Shelby? You're gonna get metal fatigue on that bracket. No, I'll be pissed. This is the problem why I don't want to paint everything. You gotta take all the shit off. Then you gotta rebuild it all. Well, I understand that I've taken the entire car apart and now's not the time to make shortcuts. I get that. But still, come on, give me a break. Man. Da -da -da -da. We got it. Marred the shit out of it, but we got it. Ugh, look at that bracket. Barely touched it. <laughs> I'm just gonna get one of these. Oh, with a hammer. There you go. There you go. In case we got lost in the meeting, you watch that first video when you saw. Well, this guy's a moron, I'm not watching this, but um, I want to tell you again why 
This is my garage, of course, and it's a garage. I'm not under any uh, delusions here. Illusions. Um, but I do call it the yoga stew because I come out here and I instantly feel better. I, I've been avoiding coming out here for the last few days because I start feeling guilty coming out here because my wife's stuck at home. She's trying to do schoolwork. Kids are stuck at home. Trying to do stuff with them. But I tried, I had to do a bunch of studying yesterday for the course I'm taking because I can't just sit still. And today, it's Easter Sunday. We did the Easter thing this morning. I'm out here. My wife's making supper, which, okay. We'll see how that goes, but I'm excited. Um, but I just, like I instantly feel better when I come out here, and hence the name, the yoga studio. Like it's just such a zen place to be. That's the piece we wanted. So what we're gonna try to do, one piece there, that's the bolt that holds it on. Here's the same piece. So this one's off California car, and this one's off this car originally, and I cleaned it up already. So that's what we want to do. And I know this is a little bit redundant, and I know you probably could just plumb the back line right into the thing, but I don't know. This speaks to me. Part of this is art. And you're not here to tell me. I imagine I'll get a little bit of use online if I, anybody cares. But that's kind of the way I want to do it. My problem is that's the way that attaches. So I got to build another one of those. And as soon as I, this one fell right off of its thing when I did it. So here's what I want to do here. This is the piece we just took off. I cleaned it up a bit. There's a bracket down here, it's in the vise. And here's the piece. This one goes to the back. These two go to the front. Brakes. This is the one off the purple car. So my kids call it. It's red actually, but the car we're working on. I want to put that into there, just like that. So I want to have two there. So then we have two stacks coming up and they'll tie into the master cylinder. I have no idea where to put this hole, but we're gonna try right in the middle. So, go with that. This drill index with bits. died there but you got three holes drilled here now we're just I'm just filing this out a bit people want to watch filing but I watched a show on a guy cobbling shoes cobbling shoes on YouTube has become one of my better things I've learned lots about leather shoes and how they're built and what's junk and what's not and it's almost zen like like you talk about yoga studio like holy cow watching somebody build a shoe is freaking relaxing I understand this doesn't pay off as much like the car stuff until we get to the very end, but think how much it will when we're at the end. We're in this instant society where everything's gotta have a payoff right away. Or 
We lose interest. Not you guys. You guys are the best. But, you know, other people. No attention spans anymore. Where this quibby stuff from TikTok come from? Man. Shorter and shorter attention spans for people. So close. Part of me wants to get it really just tight, and then we can just, you know, friction fit it in there. What is it doing? Is it sitting in there? The one side, see the one side sitting in there and the other side isn't. But it makes me happy. What if I do this? What if I put it in a vise? Oh, we've got the ways of making you talk, Mr. Bond. You expect me to talk? No, I expect you to die. Okay. All right. That's what we want. Press the shit out of it. Press my lock. See, like it's going in there. And the brass will kind of form. But I can't really get this one without getting the other one. Maybe this. See, I still got the other one. No. All right. Ooh. Oh, that's not good. It's on there. Look, look at that. Ooh. Slanty. Well, oh, slanty. I wonder what happened if I did it like this. And then I took this guy. Can't put it right there. Oh, that, that's the stuff. So the idea is now that this will sit on there and this one will handle block off that one and those two will handle the back and will block off those two. Redundant, right? Like it's pretty much a do. I don't know, but I like I want to do it this way. It's my car, I'll do it off. But um and why not? Like it's there, it just moves a bit. There's not enough material. Like see how much material is there on that side? Not enough material on the other side. I didn't get a good strike. I don't know, like what if I start pushing it out a bit? Hmm. What happens? Did everything get wrecked?
That is definitely better than it was. We're not screwing up the top too bad. Maybe I don't epoxy it. No, maybe you don't, Mr. Sutherland. Stompy. Stompy, what are you doing? Stompy. I understand this is the nitpicky little stuff. I understand that. No one's dragging a car out of the bush and firing up on this episode, but we're locked down, man. This is when the magic happens, when we do the little things that we are happy about later, that we're glad we took the time to do it. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah, that's, that's turning out nice. Stompy, what are you doing? You're racking it. See, now that does that. And we can order blinds for this. So that'll break the whole thing up. Look at the stompy go. Now let's do this, because probably a few of you are asking questions. Can you still drill something into that without smashing it? So let's just confirm that both these still work. No. No, they don't. Red chaser down there? <clears throat> Maybe. That looks like it might be crash fit. This one goes on like nobody's business. Let me get bombs right out. Where's my wrench? Where's my wrench, man? Hey, man, where's my wrench? That's a lot better than it was. Straight, at least. Not bent. Glad we caught that. See, that's seated. As far as the other one was. So we can seat both of them still. So this is not the line we're gonna end up using because it's cut already. I just want to see this work. We might end up I keep saying we I might end up putting a spacer between the ledge and the frame rail just to push this whole unit out of it. I'm just gonna walk through it just to see what I got to work with here. So then, put that in there, in theory, in practice, that would go like that. So, this is the idea. This is what I want going for here. So it is a little messy, but, this one would run the front, that would run the front. You have blinds there, blind, a blind there. And then this pipe will come up and this pipe will come up and they'll both tie in here and here. 
Uh, I think with this, this has to stay pretty close to this plane because I think the fender wall comes pretty close to here or the inner fender. So the mess is down here now, like it's here. And then these are all anchored to somebody when they come up to here. Well, that's what I like about it. Like it's, I don't know, like it's not willy nilly just going to the back. Like it has a home there. And I don't know, now that I look at it, I don't think that angle is too terrible. And it's gonna see, I'll keep the sheath for when I do the back line, but I'll have to confirm that I'm not fucking up that line as I do. I don't think I am. That brake uh, line is a lot more giving it than uh, fuel line, I find. So that's the idea there, is that now we have two ports. Now we got two open orifices, but we can block those off. So yeah, that's the one I'm gonna show you there. So obviously we got, you know, we got that set up the way we like it. I like it. Um, I don't know about that bend. It might, I might have to put a spacer to bring that out a bit. This is hot rotting. This is what hot rotting is all about. <laughs> This is as close as I get to hot riding, I guess. But may put a washer in there just to move it a little bit so that angle's not so hard on it because that's, that strut tower is right behind it there. Uh, but I, I think it's gonna work. Like I gotta buy a couple blinds for that brake line, but for, for that brake distribution thing. But what else are you gonna do? Like I understand I could do something. I don't know, I, I just kinda wanna use what's there. You know, like, like I said, I like to use every part of the Buffalo here. And that system seemed to work going up till now. So why reinvent the wheel? We could do something real fancy, but it's a little busy down there. Now, yeah, but that's, you won't see it. Like what you will see, is you'll see the two nice lines are gonna make coming up to the master cylinder and they're anchored to something. Like they're gonna be anchored to that little perch. So that'll work. But no, I enjoy doing a little thing like that. Got me out, got me thinking, got me doing something different. Uh, I hope you liked this week's episode. If you do, please like, leave a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe now. Uh, we're slowly just inching our way up in subscribers. It's a, it's a tough road. Like, I understand. Like, the shows I watch, I'm looking at the number of subscribers they have, and I realize, well, they've been around for 10 years and stuff. I've been around for three weeks. <laughs> so, I get it. But And I understand. Working on 64 New Yorkers, not everybody's a cup of tea, and no one's yelling, send it and uh stuff like that so but we'll get into some more interesting stuff we'll do some other things uh i want to thank you for watching this week i want to thank everybody for uh, paying attention <laughs> take care of yourselves uh you know this thing will be over eventually and when we does well on my side of things i'll go down to stumpy world headquarters and we'll get that neutral switch we'll get some parts for the front We'll get some linkages. We'll paint, even if we're not out of thing, we'll paint the subframe. Please, let this end. But, you know, it's not the end of the world. Everybody, hope everybody's doing well. I hope you're able to uh, make your bills and do what you need to do. And I hope you get time with your family when normally again. I keep thinking with my kids, like they'll never be this age again. I'm trying to take as much advantage as I can. So I'm not in the garage every day. I'm trying not to upset my wife by just, being Mr. Garage Guy, but there's stuff I need to do on my work front, there's stuff I need to do on this front, and there's stuff I need to do with my family, and it's just all a balance and maintaining that balance way going. And this is definitely part of the balance, but it can't be the entire thing. But anyway, I'm rambling now. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next week.